Hi, Alan Schimmel, DevOps.com here at Jenkins World, and I'm happy to be joined with my friend Aruna Ravachandra of CA. Aruna, welcome. Thank you, Alan, for having me. Thank you. So, Aruna, big, big news here at uh, Jenkins World today was the announcement of the DevOps Express mm -hmm. group, and of course, CA is a, one of the 14 founding members. Yep. And uh, we actually, we were just happy to have Jeff Schaefer in, and we spoke a little bit about it. Mm -hmm. Why don't you give our audience kind of a quick rundown of what this DevOps Express means to you? Okay. So, um, you know, within our portfolio at CA, we have a plethora of products which play across the entire software delivery lifecycle. So if you are here at Jenkins World, you'll see, you know, products which play within the testing phase, right? Mm -hmm. Like Blaze Meter, I saw Sauce Labs, which is with functional testing, Blaze Meter, performance testing. Yeah. Uh, you and then you see vendors <coughs> in the release automation space like Zebia Labs. So you you'll see a plethora of products across the board. We at CA are in a very unique position because we have all the products which help customers accelerate their continuous delivery lifecycle, starting all the way from. Uh, starting with an agile transformation as you know we acquired Rally last mm -hmm. year and that's our agile central portfolio sure and then uh, we also acquired uh, grid tools with that we actually uh, got a product called application release designer which automatically gives you the ability to create test cases right from the requirements phase mm -hmm. which where you can take your user stories and automatically start thinking about you know testing so that you can left shift and play into the whole continuous delivery and devops life cycle uh, we also have our itko products which mm -hmm. includes service virtualization where you're thinking about how you actually move the needle to the left by doing uh, by testing your applications yes. using virtual services mm -hmm. and then if you want to play across the entire STLC, you need a hook, an anchor, something which is like your conveyor belt, which helps you move the needle of your application going all the way from, um, you know, your um, initial phase of development onto the uh, operation side. And we have uh, the acquisition we made with Nolio with our release automation portfolio. Got it. Which gives you the ability to do end-to-end -end release management, release lifecycle management across the board. And then if you look on the op side, CA is always been a very strong player in the ops space so we have our Wiley products with our market leading application performance management mm -hmm. and then we also have our infrastructure management products and we have always been the leader in the mainframe space right. so across the board CA has the unique opportunity to provide a seamless experience to our customers from a digital transformation perspective so customers who are embarking on this journey of agile and they're moving towards embracing devops principles with uh, continuous delivery continuous integration continuous testing and continuous operations we have the ability to provide the tool sets to the customers um, and bring everything together uh, from one particular vendor. We know that customers are not going to go with one particular vendor, but we have the ability really to provide to the choice. And, and for us, it's a unique opportunity to influence the DevOps consortium across the entire life really cycle, true. right? Like not just from one, one point piece. of view, but across the entire STLC. Excellent. So, Aruna, I'm going to pivot a little bit and go Barbara Walters on you here. Okay. And let's forget about CA and let's talk about Aruna. Okay. So, um, Aruna, your title is your, well, I don't know about your title, but I know you're involved in product marketing across yep. the DevOps portfolio. portfolio at CA. And for anyone who thinks, oh, this is just another marketing woman or a marketing girl, they're sadly mistaken in your case. Give our listeners a little bit of your background in terms of your technical chops. Okay, sounds good. So I started my uh, career about 20 plus years ago just like all of the engineers here in the Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. uh, started my career at Hewlett Packard uh -huh. during the days of uh, Dave and Bill. Mm -hmm. uh, Packard, I was at HP for 17 years. Spent the first uh, half of my career on the engineering side. Uh, so I started my career as a network engineer writing device drivers for HP UX. Uh -huh. uh, migrated into a functional architect and was a part of the OpenView group. Uh, and we spun off one part of the open view group during the dot-com days uh -huh. and you know everybody was incubating and there was a lot of uh, 
uh, startups which were incubated in the Silicon Valley. So we created a startup within HP and I was hand chosen by the general manager to be a part of that business unit which was called Smart Internet Usage. Yeah. We were a, a group of 11 engineers across the board and um, we spun off within HP, we were given a decent amount of budget in order to innovate mm -hmm. and um, you know I played an amazing role in terms of being able to bring a brand new product to market and see a run rate going from zero to 15 million dollars wow. by the time I left I was a functional architect uh, for the group and then from then I moved on to be the engineering director for the high availability labs uh -huh. at HP there I was responsible for um, the high availability solution which was one of the market leading products from uh, Hewlett Packard and then after that I decided that uh, I always even as an engineer I had a passion for the voice of the customer so I always wanted to go on to the business side uh -huh. but um, you know decided to make the change at a point when I was I, I could afford to do it so as an engineer you have a lot of flexibility in terms of your schedule because yes. I could write code where I wanted when I wanted um, you know I'm a mother of two beautiful girls and at that particular point it was not easy for me to move on to the business side mm -hmm. uh, even though I always wanted to move on to the business side so uh, uh, 10 years uh, after and uh, after a very good successful career on the engineering side and once I realized I had an opportunity to shift and change, I moved to the business side um, and uh, did product management, product marketing for another eight years at HP for a lethora of products from storage to security. Wow. And uh, I was, uh, when I, uh, last five years before I left HP, I was with HP Software, mm -hmm. which just now got acquired by right, Microfocus. Right, so yes. And I had responsibilities for all the products on the marketing side while I was at HP. So anyone who thinks you're just some marketing chick is wrong. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. And I have to say, you know, I most people will gauge you when you they heard the word marketing, they always assume that you don't have the technical chops. In my case, I have uh, had the honor to have play into both uh, the technical side as well as on the business side um, because I have a bachelor's in computer science, a master's in computer science and an MBA. So have a good balance across <laughs> the board. You are have, there. Have written million lines of code in my career uh -huh. and I'm always thankful for my engineering degree because you know it's when you have the technical background it's very easy to pick up any technology across the board. Absolutely and, and Aruna that's such a great inspiring story you know we look out at this Jenkins world and I looked at it earlier when the floor was full mm -hmm. and if there's you know if there's three percent that are women here it's a lot and I don't know what it'll take to get more Arunas on these floors and, and developing code and being involved and I don't really care whether they're marketing or engineering though we want to see them in engineering what do you what will it take Aruna what what for audience, maybe there's some women out there now saying, man, I'd like that to be my life story. Mm -hmm. They're young. They're just starting out. What, what advice can you give them? Okay, so I, I, I think the hardest challenge, right? So coming, I grew up in India, born mm -hmm. raised in India. And uh, growing up in India, I was only given two paths, which was either you be an engineer or you're a doctor. There was okay. no other choice. <laughs> okay. If you have any other choice, you're a loser. So right. that's, that's, that's the track I had, uh, which was chosen for me while I was in India. So, you know, I had, and I, I always um, wanted to be an engineer. So right from before, it was programmed in me. Really? So it was easy for me, right? But here in the United States, I have two girls, 18 and 14 years old. And I've seen that there is a lot of choices to them. And it's, and people usually don't, make the tough choice because no. girls especially they look at a stem career as a hard career yeah. right it's not easy to embrace a career and i'll tell you my personal story my own daughter who's now off to cal poly slow into computer oh, science um did not want to go into computer science really so spent the uh, when she when she started her high school she thought she wants to be a dermatologist and then from there, she decided, no, I don't want to, after a year, uh, after her freshman year, decided, no, I want to be a, a lawyer. So the reason is because they, they, they have a lot of it's choice. An easier path. And, and they want to take the easier path. And constantly, you know, I, I spent a lot of time exposing her 
to multitude of the disciplines out there right like uh, i used to have i used to go and do talks at her high school uh -huh. in order to be able to influence a lot of the other girls because people really don't know right and um, and if their parents are engineers you know they'll see how their parents work either they'll embrace it or they won't embrace it i've seen people go in their extremes right um, but most of the time people I actually think that it doesn't matter whether it's a boy or a girl people really don't know and they yeah. realize what they want to be probably when they are 20 to 23 at which particular time they've lost some amount of time and and life has and taken its course right, and it's very hard close. to go back yes. uh, and then you know I, re reposition yourself into a particular career I I have the same my son is 17 he's a senior in high school now just heading out to college fantastic in math and science he wants to major in statistics. I said, okay, wh what are we going to do with the statistics? Look at STEM, look at engineering. And, and it's the same thing. Well, maybe I'll go to law school. Maybe I'll, you know, do this. And I, I don't want to force them. You don't want to, right? Because if you force them, ultimately they'll be unhappy. Right. But while at the same time, you know, the part which I spent the last three years of our high school influencing her is to show her that, you know, if she wants to have a the same standard of living she's used to it it takes a we, good, uh, it takes time you have to work hard yeah. and the, uh, one thing is um, you know if you uh, and i told her you know I, I i think she's got the capability to be an amazing engineer but mm. only she has to figure it out for herself they right? do ultimately uh, but i told her that in, in being an engineer myself you know you don't always have to be the a plus parent you you can mm, strive right. to be that but you can also be average and be a team member and, and be a great team player yeah. and you can learn and so and still make a good living that's exactly uh, i agree what, with what you I shared with her all the time and and uh, and and i also told her one thing and using myself as an example i told her that you get an engineering degree you'll be exposed to tech right so you'll have four solid years in an of area and think. then i said after your four years you realize yes i don't want to be a computer science engineer i don't want to work behind my desk mm -hmm. you have an opportunity to go into product management you can go into architecture you, you can still you can go, go to law sales. school no and you can go into go sales, sales you can go into let's marketing not send them it into opens sales. up but doors yeah. for you but it gives you, you can a never go degree. wrong yeah you I, I agree go wrong. And I said, even if you want to go into medicine, because she also decided once that she wanted to be a doctor. Right. I told her, you easily get into med school because people will look at you that you have science. a different background which other people don't have. So, which means that you actually can you innovate. You stand out. So, that is my pitch talk to her. I've convinced her. Don't know how what she's going to okay. be. But she's now going into computer Congratulations. science. Congratulations. If she comes half of what you are, she'll be fine. And, and, and the other thing I also want to share is that um, I'm about to publish a book i have two co-authors okay and it's going to be launched at ca world okay. it's in my area where i'm Excuse very me. passionate about ca world is november 14th to the 18th that's I think. correct yes right? and in so, las vegas uh, it, and the book is going to be launched at ca world mm -hmm. and when i uh, embarked on this journey of writing the book I, I i play into the devops world right like so i have responsibilities for all the tool sets within ca which goes within starting from api management mm -hmm. down into um, continuous delivery all the way into the operation side and i do a lot of the ebcs and presentations with customers i talk to several customers per day what i learned was that the hardest question every customer asked me in the ebc was that how do i share the roi of devops to my management mm -hmm. because if you think about DevOps, it's all about a cultural transformation. Yep. It's a collaboration. There are principles. There is no. It's so not where like is I the tell ROI, where yeah. there is a, a you know prescriptive way to basically mm -hmm. make DevOps successful. And people don't know where to start. That was one of the challenges. Mm -hmm. And people don't know how do they basically realize the ROI of DevOps. So talking to a bunch of customers um, and learning about their success and their journey. So the premise of the book is about how you can actually demonstrate the value from devops learning from the customer examples i've had an opportunity to be privy to yeah so you won't see ca products mentioned in the book nope right so it'll talk about the tool sets and you know it can be ca tool set it can be anybody's tool set and it'll talk about what are the uh, you know uh, the successes customers have actually gotten with the whole uh, tool sets 
in terms of being able to embrace DevOps. So it has some of the um, paradigms on what it takes in order to establish a successful DevOps organization from a culture. It also talks into the ROI of DevOps and it uh, gives you some amount of guidance where people need to embark on this journey because there are tons of books out there yes. but nothing really focuses on the ROI of DevOps and that was my theme. Great. So I have two amazing co-authors, two people on my team, mm -hmm. Kiran Taylor and Pete. Sure. Pete uh, Waterhouse is located in, in Australia, Australia. and yep. is a, a, an authority in the DevOps space. And a freaking contributor to DevOps.com. Exactly. <laughs> and, and Kiran too. And Kiran so as well. All three of us three good to people. DevOps.com. And I actually have seen a rough draft of the book, and, mm -hmm. uh, and I was very impressed. Thank I'm you very much. I'm looking forward for it coming out. One last thing I wanted to mention, though, and it goes back to this whole women who code and, and girls who code and, and you know part of, of who you are and that is you've do you're donating your yeah, so share I'm of profits all the proceeds not me it's all the all, of, all of us are donating all the royalties from the book to girls who code so when That's we launch great. the book uh, you know, uh, we'll also be able to see how the money is actually being leveraged in order to help other girls, girls who want to embrace a STEM career. That's fantastic. Aruna, we've gone over time, but thank you so much for sharing. And thank you, Alan. Right. It's always oh, awesome to have a you. great partnership <laughs> with DevOps.com. Thank you. This is Alan Schimmel for DevOps.com.